Okay, welcome back. Um, Nancy, um, could you just wrap up your thoughts on some of the um, works of the facilitators, Nigerian facilitators working with you? Sure. So the Nigerian Facilitators Network is um, an emerging group of people who are trained uh, with the kind of skills that really enables them to uh, have productive conversations between people who previously have not had much trust with each other, like the example of the youth, the tribal leaders, the police officers in um, Plateau State in the city of Jos. Okay, so looking at um, your fact sheets on, on Nigeria, um, it's there that um, it's written there, Nigeria's most pressing problems, including weak governance, corruption, the Boko Haram insurgency, and persistent intercommunal conflict could soon be under control. That's quoting from the fact sheets now. And this was um, after the election of President uh, Muhammad Buhari in 2015. Do you still hold this belief, even with all of this um, continued killings in the country? You, you know, that was certainly the hope after the election. Uh, and the question is uh, how to still make good on that hope. I think there's, um, especially as we see what's going on today, just this week with the additional killings, that people's confidence has waned. And there has not been the kind of government action that can get either immediate relief uh, as well as the longer term issues that are critical for both restoring citizen confidence um, and for uh, stopping these conflicts. And it's everything from improved justice, uh, security that people have confidence in, um, and some of the issues around uh, resource use, better resource management in a time of a rising population and increased environmental concerns. So there, it will take a wholesale um, set of efforts from every level of government. Uh, one of the things that we have done is work at the state level, given the role that the states have in moving forward some of these reforms and delivering for their citizens. May I bring in Oge now? One of USIP's works was Justice and Security Dialogues in the Sahel and Maghreb. Can you just tell us what this was about? I mean, as briefly as you can. Sure, definitely. And I just want to, before I go into that, I, I just want to build up a little bit in, on our work at the state level um, and looking at how we've engaged at our level and how the network of facilitators also fits into this work. This week we had the opportunity to engage with the Plateau State Peacebuilding Agency and the Kaduna, Kaduna Peacebuilding Commission, both initiatives that are started at the state level to try to see how they can begin to address conflict from a proactive stance rather than react to conflict because the, the, the modes of addressing conflict as we've seen over time have often been reactionary. So this is a process of trying to understand how folks can be able to identify the drivers of conflict early enough and be able to address them before they escalate into violent conflict. In many ways this also ties into the entire notion behind the justice and security dialogue program. So USIP implements this program in a couple of countries across the Sahel. So Nigeria is one of the countries where we, we were implementing this initiative, as I mentioned earlier, in Plateau State, in just North local government areas specifically in, in Plateau State. The program is also implemented in Mali. We have the initiative running in Burkina Faso, in Senegal, and in, in Tunisia, and also in Niger. And I think one of the things that we've seen, one um, example, especially if I'll give the example from Burkina Faso, where there had been a lot of conflict between the local police, the local vigilante groups, and the communities. And they were able to come together over a series of dialogues that happened first within the community, then within the local um, security actors, then within the vigilante groups. This was a process of trying to understand what are the key issues driving the conflict. USIP doesn't come in with a pre-described um, list of ideas or a list of, 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 
of indicators or, pro or problems outlined, we allow the community members through the Justice and Security Dialogue Initiative to, to identify these and think about ways to resolve them. And this is what happened in a community called Saba in Burkina Faso, where we brought the communities together. And for the first time, just a couple of months ago, the local police and the vigilante groups were actually able to sit down together to try to hash out their differences and forge a way forward. So the Justice, Security and Dialogue Initiative is actually a process that, as I've heard people describe it here in Nigeria, it's an organic process that allows them identify what the issues are, come up with solutions on their own, and then find ways to forge forward to reach a sustainable end. Okay, um, Nancy, let's talk about um, the recent uh, research on, on the U.S. diplomatic defense and development communities known as the uh, 3Ds. Um, what exactly is this about and how is this supposed, what are the findings, especially in, in Lake Chad region? Sure. Um, this, uh, the 3Ds, uh, describes the heart of, uh, of a study group that we undertook in Washington, D.C., uh, looking at how the U.S. uses its defense diplomacy and development uh, capabilities uh, to tackle these fundamental issues of state fragility. And what we mean by fragility is when you have a, a, a frayed or or unhealthy relationship between the state and its societies. The state is either illegitimate or doesn't have the capacity to serve its citizens. But what we see is there are often very different pathways of action, that the security actors are pursuing one problem, the diplomats another, and the development actors yet a third. So the effort was to bring these three streams of effort together so that they have a shared understanding of what the problem is to maximize the potential. And you know, this is true within the United States. I think it's probably true uh, in, in, in international and probably here in Nigeria, where because we think the problem may be a different uh, set of goals, we don't really get at the issue. Um, and so for example, in Lake Chad, a military solution alone will not solve the deep issues in that area which is also true in the northeast of Nigeria. There is a security component